Bye. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, welcome to another video, everybody, and welcome to Iceland. So I'm currently in Reykjavik, but as the title of this video suggests, I'm going to a part of Iceland that you have almost certainly never seen before. So I'm here to pick up a few supplies that I need, and then I've got to take an internal flight and then about a three hour boat ride. So the area that we're going to is isolated, remote and truly wild, which is going to present so many photography opportunities, hopefully original and unique opportunities. But first, I need to do a bit of shopping. Ready? Sail into the wind Heading west to find my reason Longing for something greater than this And I'm right with anticipation Yeah, I have a good feeling So the place that we are going to is wild and it's going to be incredibly cold So I got myself a nice, very, very fancy jacket waterproof and insulated and I needed some waterproof gloves and now the final item I need is uh, some snow spikes or, or um, shoe spikes so that I don't slip and break my oh yeah so I don't slip and break my neck Right, so welcome to the second leg of this travel adventure. We have just landed in Isafajur. I'm going to show you on Google Maps where we are and where we're going. So obviously I mentioned earlier on that we're going to a place never shot before. I'm not sure if there's much truth in that, but certainly, as I'll explain, uh, this place that we're going to is not frequented in winter. So we're here in Isafajur. I'll just show you on the map. And we're going to sail out into the Atlantic and around to the north tip of this peninsula, the north coast of the peninsula, to a place called Hornvik. Now, I was invited on this trip by a group of wildlife photographers who are very interested in photographing Arctic foxes. Now, there is a place on the south coast of the peninsula, just here, where you can easily photograph Arctic foxes. But we're, we're going further afield in search of the elusive white Arctic fox. That's, that's, the, <laughs> that's, that's the dream. Now I'm no wildlife photographer, but what I'm really excited about is the opportunity for new landscapes. It's like going to be like an untapped winter resource with sea cliffs, a coastline, beautiful snow and mountains, and of course Arctic foxes. Such a huge, dense population of Arctic foxes. And soon we'll be heading to the boat just, uh, just over there, and uh, hopefully it's not too rough of a trip. <laughs> feel better. Alright, so it's, uh, it's a little rougher than it first looked when leaving the harbour, but we're alright. Now, I mentioned before about the elusive white fox. Well, it's not that they're elusive, it's just that most of the Arctic foxes on the peninsula we're going to, Hornstrand, Nature Reserve and the Hornvik area, they're all coastal Arctic foxes, and coastal Arctic foxes tend to be brown. But because there's such a high density of foxes in Hornvik, where we're going, then there's a higher chance of seeing a white one. So I'm very excited about that. Oh man, all I have to do now is survive the crossing. Take care of my camera bag. Oh, oh, I think we come in nice and slow. Oh, oh yeah. Another wave coming in. Nicely done. Oh. Well, good wave coming in. Oh. 
Actually, surprisingly, uh, surprisingly, not too bad. We're not in yet. yet. No, that's true. Wow, well that was far more exciting than I anticipated. Quite a lot of seasickness. <laughs> and then the, uh, the Zodiac you can see behind us, the rib boat, bringing all of the stuff. It's a really rough landing here, so in fact, you can see we're having some outboard problems. Hold on. So it appears there's some outboard motor problems and we can't get the boat started. So if we can't get the boat started, we can't pick everyone else up. Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's not good, but this is really, I mean, this is why not many people, very few people come here in winter. You can hike here in summer, but in winter it's very inaccessible. Uh, so hopefully we'll get everyone else off the boat and then we can, you know, relax and begin to explore. All right, so that was a, a relatively sketchy landing. Um, and it was definitely frantic. <laughs> we got here, everyone's here, we've loaded all of the gear up these steps that lead from the beach up the hill to the house that you can see behind us. There's two properties here and nothing else. So we are so, so, so remote. It's fantastic. Obviously, we're only staying in one of the properties. So I'm going to go for a bit of a walk. Just, uh, you know, I'm not planning on going too far. A lot of the guys have gone out with, uh, with the hope of seeing some Arctic foxes. So, you know, who knows? Uh, maybe I'll see something. But we've got beautiful lights. So there might even be an image to be had. I wasn't planning on any photography. Uh, today in this video I just wanted to do the journey of getting here and have a brief look around uh, so yeah we'll crack on have a bit of a walk see what we see ah man so I thought um, I thought I'd show you some of the gear that I've brought with me because well, it's a bit different to, to usual well some additions have been made uh, so you saw me pick up this jacket of all of my waterproof jackets I've had now for many, many, many years and they've all failed. So I just wanted something that could really do the job. So this is nice thing, it looks good. It's, uh, it's by 66 uh, degrees north, picked up in Iceland. And um, I also have with me, not clothing, but I have some snowshoes uh, because I think the terrain here could be very beneficial. You see all these hills around me. Well, I plan on going up high and exploring this whole area over the next week. So the gear that I've got with me, bear in mind we're gonna be photographing Arctic foxes, which I have no experience with whatsoever. I've got my Nikon Z7 II with a 24 to 70 f 2.8. That's most likely for the landscapes. And I've got my 100 to 400 for landscapes and hopefully for the foxes, if we see any. But what I've also got, wait till you see this. I got in contact with Nikon and they very kindly have loaned me <laughs> Look at the size of this. This is a 600 millimeter F4 prime with a built-in 1.4 teleconverter. So effectively it's a 600, 100? 600 to 800 lens. This is an absolute monster. So the house we're staying in, which is just behind me there, it's very basic, but it has everything you need. It's got beds, it's got a stove, and it even has a toilet, although there's no running water, so we're using buckets with water from the stream. Uh, that same water from the stream is also our drinking water. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's such a cozy place to be, and it's so quintessentially Icelandic with a lot of history all around the building. So what a place to stay. Now, with that being said, I do quite fancy an image, hang on, you know I can't do this with my finger, I do quite fancy an image over here, so I'm going to go and have a look, but before I do that, because I may or may not have success, I just want to say a quick thank you to today's sponsor, which helps massively with these trips, um, and that is Squarespace. So if you're not aware of Squarespace, they're an online 
website building platform. So essentially, if you're a photographer and you want your own website with a really nice gallery, your own domain, maybe an online store, but you haven't got a clue where to start, or how to get yourself a nice website. Well, you can do it all through Squarespace with no web experience at all. It's an intuitive, simple drag and drop system. You can watch a couple of YouTube videos and you can learn how to do it easily in a day or two. And if you get stuck, they've got 24 seven customer service. I've done it myself. I would de definitely recommend it and do recommend it week in and week out. So if you fancy yourself a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and you get a free trial. And if you like that free trial, you can use the offer code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase. Now, I've got a shot in mind, that black, where the black beach meets the, the, the snow, maybe something a bit minimalist, a bit abstract. We'll see the, the sky, there's not too much going on in the sky. I don't know, and still feeling rough, if I'm honest. I just, just want to have a cup of tea and go to bed. Well, I thought there was a shot, but um, I wasn't feeling it. And actually, I think I was just trying to do it so I could get an image in this video, because <laughs> it feels wrong releasing a video without an image. But that's exactly what I don't want to do. That's what I want to move away from. I only want to release work that I'm really proud of. Um, so yeah, anyway. Oh man, I still feel rough from that boat. So I think it's about time I sign off. But do tune in for the next first Arctic Fox shot. Oh my gosh. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh gosh. Oh, I really shouldn't be filming this. I should not be filming this. Just as I was packing away, something caught my eye, something moving in the distance. It was an Arctic Fox walking across pristine snow and I thought we've got this the light was beautiful so I broke out the beast Big Bertha 600 to 800 and just followed this tiny fox up this ridge line with a beautiful pink pastel sky behind now the fox was far away was far away but that's good I'm not I always think of myself if I want to shoot wildlife I don't just want to necessarily always fill the frame with the animal I want to include the environment and that's what we got it was it was a gray fox so sorry a blue fox they're gray but they're called blue foxes um, and it had a beautiful shape to it distinct shape contrast against the white snow pink peachy sky you know and hey not the world's best wildlife shot but my first Arctic fox and I was not surprised, uh, sorry, I was not expecting that. And, ah, uh, uh, yeah. Now, now, <laughs> we will end the video. All right, cheers, guys. Uh, I'll leave you with, um, yeah, I'll leave you with the, uh, the image. Cheers, bye, bye, bye. Thank you.